There is flour that still tastes like wheat. There are flours that actually taste good. If I put a small amount on my tongue, there is still a, a life to it. That's what flavor is. I want this bread that was made with real food. For bakers who want to start working with local flour, there are challenges in bread production, but there are great payoffs. The flavors that you can get out of different wheat varieties or a freshly ground, locally grown flour, these flowers don't exist elsewhere. There was a time when you could live on bread alone, but with commodity ingredient you cannot because it's void of a lot of nutrition. For over a hundred years, conventional wisdom held that the Northeast did not have the ability to produce high quality wheat needed for modern bread baking. But in recent years, farmers, millers, and bakers have teamed up to change all that. We used to be New England's bread basket. The Hudson and Champlain Valley used to produce wheat, and it could be done again. We can look back and, you know, historically and see that New York produced world-class wheat. There's no reason it can't come back. Bakers of differing size and markets are sharing their techniques for baking and selling bread made from locally grown grain, as well as their passion for creating a self-sustaining regional food system. My name is Matt Funicello, and I own Rock Hill Bakehouse. We are a small wholesale bread bakery in upstate New York. We bake approximately 15,000 pounds of mostly naturally leavened bread every week. We use a fairly high percentage of local flour at the moment, it's about 40%. We were using white flours primarily, and those were all Midwestern. I don't want to buy flour from the Midwest at all. I think it's insane. I'm not making 10 pounds of bread. I'm making 10,000 pounds of bread. If I'm going to be a wholesale baker and I'm going to do volume and I want to use regional flour, I'm going to have to get regional flour that's being produced in volume. And North Country already had the flour. They are already producing huge amounts of, of wheat. Green Market implementing the 15% rule was amazingly instrumental. And what it allowed us to do was go from, you know, using a couple percentage points of regional or local flour to using 20% almost overnight. We really are at 40% this year. I'm imagining 50 to 55% next year. My name is Stefan Sanders and I'm a baker. I run the Wide Awake Bakery. I'd say probably 70% of what we make is all local grain. We felt like if we turn our attention to this, there's no reason we can't make bread as good as any bread in the whole world. When we first started grinding flour, we you know, couldn't have been more clueless about what we were doing. So we needed sort of a sounding board. Because we have the relationship between the farm the mill and the bakery, we can make adjustments on each end. You know, we're always, always talking, you know, what, did you do something different with this latest batch? We've definitely come to some conclusions about grain quality based on what they notice. People ask us uh, why our bread is so good, all that stuff, and basically we don't do anything special is kind of our attitude. What we do try to do is incorporate every best practice that we can lay our hands on. I'm Don Lewis, and I own and operate a sustainable flour mill in Dutchess County called the Wild Hive Grain Project. Our goal is to resource local and regional grains. This project is about 15 years old. I added a bakery to my production to help round out my income. I felt like I needed an edge in the market because the competition was fierce. So initially the, the flour was an ingredient that they did not have. Don began milling himself and is now a full-time miller, providing local flour to artisanal bakers in the region, such as Italy in New York City. My name is Paul Mack. I'm the head baker here at Italy. We make about 34 different kinds of bread, um, 27 of which are for retail sale, and they're all based upon uh, northern Italian recipes. Currently, we're using about 60% uh, commercial flour and 40% organic flour. It's a locally grown organic flour from Wild Hive Farm. Baking with local grains comes with its own unique challenges. Through experimentation, bakers are exploring the limitations and potential of local flour. 
When you add a local and regional flower in that's been stone ground, that still has a lot of freshness and a lot of sharp edges to it, that doesn't have the protein levels of a Midwestern flower. It's a really harsh learning curve. Regional bakers tend to shy away from, they say the grain in the Northeast doesn't compare to the grain of the commodity production. And it's true, it's lower in gluten. Even the machinery is designed to work with very high gluten flour, which is a very strong flour, and it needs to be beat up in order to get this development of the gluten. Whereas a lower percentage of gluten in a lot of the flours from our regional production, that requires less work, less development time, less mixing. You can build successful breads from lower protein contents. You just have to approach the process differently. This flour that we were using, it had this very weak period in it. And we didn't know that. We thought it was weakness, not a weak period. Well, figuring out that if you just left it alone for another 15 minutes, it would bring its strength back. It would come back. This is a major revelation. And it just requires waiting. You have to allow the flour to be your teacher Using the, the local whole grain flours in the bread requires um, sometimes a little bit of tweaking to the recipe. The different um, flours require different amounts of water and absorb differently. Our buckwheat baguette, I had to increase the hydration a lot because the buckwheat flour and the spelt flour was absorbing a lot of water um, and the dough was just drying out as it fermented. Our spelt ciabatta, which is about 85% whole grain spelt flour, so that's probably the most whole grain bread we make. We added an hour of fermentation to that, and that extra fermentation, I think, gave the flour time to absorb the water and seemed to result in more structure in the final product. So we got a nice open structure, even though it's still 85% uh, whole grain spelt. I think you have to think about it more like a wine. Uh, the grain that you get from that year is a result of whatever climate we had that year. So first thing is to recognize that the flour is not gonna be exactly the same, but I, I think that makes it more interesting. Even these big mill white flowers are inconsistent. All flour is inconsistent. That's how it is. As you develop techniques that get you closer to the flour, you don't notice it as inconsistency. That is, you have a range of technique. The more sensitive you are as a baker, the more you adjust. The challenges are also maybe it's joys. You do get some variation, and you just have to be attentive to the changes. I think that having a little inconsistency sort of signals that you're on to something interesting and uh, it is more challenging but it's nice to be able to step up to the challenge. In addition to the baking challenges, bakers are also faced with supply and marketing hurdles which highlight the need for a robust conversation with fellow bakers, millers, and of course consumers. The biggest challenge is really simple to articulate and that is simply that the supply has not been there. You just have to keep building the base of farmers and continuing to try to promote the flour. There's no reason why we can't have wheat grown in New York State to take care of that volume. Now the market's there. Now the people who are thinking about it, who are scared, who are tentative, those people need that reassurance. And we're giving that to them by supporting that larger mid-level flour and wheat production. I think customers do notice a difference. You put two loaves next to each other, mixed exactly the same, shaped the same. One will locally produce flour, one will commercially produce. And I guarantee every time, everyone's gonna choose the one with locally produced flour. The education of the consumer, uh, that part of direct marketing is so important. The consumer has to understand their, what they're paying for and that they're getting what they're paying for, that there's a difference in the value. Being in farmer's markets, the opportunity is there for you to really educate your consumer. That's a great thing, and that's really how I built my business. For someone who's trying to plan a bakery, the economics are very tight. These margins are slim. Stefan and I started kicking around the idea of, well, why don't we start a small CSA bakery? At the Wide Awake Bakery, we sell our bread through CSAs, their bread shares. Our members sign up and they pay they're $5 a week, they pay in one lump sum. $130 gets them a loaf of bread a week. Think of the advantages for the baker here. My risk on all of those loaves of bread just got reduced to zero. So this core market, which is paid in advance, really makes it possible for us to exist. 
Uh, this is my second season in the Wide Awake bread chair. I got two loaves today. It's about the best bread around, in my opinion. It's crispy and delicious and flavorful and fresh and wonderful. Just knowing that I'm a part of a community and being able to support that is really great. If the rest of the world disappeared regionally, we could probably sustain ourselves. So it's kind of a nice thought. This local flour can make really great bread. It's got really good flavor. It may not have the protein levels that you're used to using with these commodity flours. And maybe you have to adjust your practices a little bit, but you could make as good or better bread. I think better because it's got better flavor and it's fresher than any of these commodity flours. I think that the key ingredient to the transition is having an out of the box, open-minded view of the ingredient itself and not taking the ingredient for granted. As consumers and bakers and growers and millers, we have to start having more faith in ourselves that we're capable of adjusting to the variables that are going to exist when you talk about sustaining and supporting regional agriculture. That's what we're doing, and it's hard. But I, I would never want to give it up. It's an amazing experience, too, and the food is incredible as a result. So there's a lot of interest now in local grains, and I expect that to increase. I do encourage it to increase.